Okay, what's your name? Uh, Philip Chin. Can you tell us about this workshop? Uh, today's workshop, we were teaching uh, students and patrons from the Arts Arts Gallery. They had the, uh, their opening for uh, Capture Photo Fest, and we basically taught, uh, explained to people here how to do the wet place process. It looks like your skin, the texture of your skin. When that happens, uh, then this plate is ready to be dropped into this thing called silver nitrate. Now, the, plate, the process is called wet plate colloidal photography. Wet is the key word. It must remain wet throughout the whole process. If it dries at any point, the plate is no longer good. So, we're just gonna wait for it. Oh, it's ready. So, we're gonna hand it to Maisie. Maisie's gonna go into the darkroom. You, she'll leave the door open, and you can see there's a tank. You can stick your head in. Uh, there's a tank that's, that she's, she's putting it in, and that has the silver nitrate, which is basically silver. So it's that uh, with, the, with the collodion will make it sensitive to light. So it's gonna stay in the container for about five minutes, three to five minutes. After three to five minutes, it comes out, it comes out to a film holder, and then we take a picture. And so how many would you get out of one of those bottles for $90? Uh, if you don't spill it, yeah. and if you don't make any mistakes, uh, 30, 20, 30, oh, something that like that. Many, yeah. Not that many, uh, but that's just one part of chemistry. Silver nitrate in that tank, is about $200 worth of silver nitrate and that gets used up, so you keep replenishing it. So I usually have four batches of that stuff as a backup. So I have backup, backup, backup. So it gets very, very, very expensive doing this kind of thing. But it's a fun process. Um, any questions so far? It's pretty straightforward. You're just gonna see as we go. Okay, where's my model, Jimmy? Right here. There we go, Jimmy the man. Okay, so what happens now, in between usually the five minutes is when I start posing people. So if you notice here, we have a lot of lighting, and what I'm doing is replicating daylight. Uh, this collodion process is sensitive to ultraviolet light. Not tungsten light, what you have there, it does not see that. It's, it's sensitive to daylight, the, the top spectrum of daylight. And on that table over there, you'll see two sets of charts. Uh, one is on the left, is the colors you see normally, and on the right is what collodion sees. So if you look at the differences, uh, cool colors come out very light, warm colors come out very dark. Okay, so Jimmy's gonna be over here, and what's gonna happen is that I'm just, I have this thing called a headrest. So basically in the old days, basically in the old days, uh, when they did photographs of people, um, they had to hold them very, very still. Reason being, digital camera, digital camera, how fast do you think your camera is? ISO 400, 800, collodion, speed, three or less. So three, so not 400, three. Okay, so basically you had to hold still for a very, very long time. So in the old days, they didn't smile too much. G guess why? They, it's hard to hold a smile like for two, you know, whatever, forever how long, right? So they found, a, they found um, a pose, a feeling that they could hold for that long. Okay, so Jimmy is going to, what I have is, a, uh, here, pop up for a second. So I have this little brace, it's, a, it's a jury rigged. And basically, it's something I just maneuver. So depending how tall you are, you bring it up or down. If you have more people, like that earlier, we had two. So basically, I stick it to the back of their head. So basically, it holds it in the back of the neck. And this, for you, is your reference point. So basically, to hold still for... Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're here. You can hear. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So basically, for him to hold... No, oh, go this way. Show him that thing. So basically, they lean in that. And that point is what you hold still and go against. So you can hold still for that 22 seconds. All right, pop up for a second. I'm gonna fix this. Stick it here. Okay, come back here. Okay, how do you want to pose? What do you want to be? Go right up to the headrest, and that's your point. So basically, the headrest, this whole thing is out of the photograph. So this is here. Here, here. They're using daylight. Well, they use daylight. They would shoot inside. Hey, Daisy, how much time we got? Oh, perfect. Okay, so uh, back in the day, they had daylight studios, which they had skylights. They shot by windows back in the day, or you shoot outside. Outside is the best type of lighting because it's free. But the only thing is, it's inconsistent. The sun moves around all the time, and you want to shoot basically in the shade. So that is the most consistent light outdoors. And it gives a nice, soft type of light. This, I'm replicating, uh, replicating daylight. Uh, there's other ways of doing it. This is a lot of power. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's almost 400 watts of daylight per each unit. So it's 1,200 watts of light. That's a lot of power over 16 seconds. So if you use the flash, you got a big 
hit a light. It blinds people. You can do it, but it hurts people. And for me, the aesthetic, when you look at photographs back in the day, uh, used against a flash, they look two different things. One's very hard lighting, it looks, you can tell it's a flash. This, the way I'm kind of shooting, it has the aesthetic of back in the day. It's, for me, it, personally, it's a little more appealing. Okay, so, looking good. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus on the camera. I'm gonna sneak you just over there for a second. I'll show you guys the process in a second, but basically what's gonna happen is that this camera you see downstairs, old fashioned camera. I have another one over there. That one's more portable. <laughs> that, that camera's more portable. I take that in the field with me all the time. This is a special occasion to bring sight in this place because we have the facility to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look in the back of the camera and compose the shot. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go about there. Oh, no, no, no. Put your hands in your pocket, buddy. Let me see what you look like. Hold it right there. Okay, right about there. Okay, so uh, I will show you guys this in a second. Uh, let me just focus him first. Okay, look towards me, please, Jimmy. Good. Nice. Okay. So, Maisie, how are we doing time? Okay, if you guys want to quickly just walk by and take a look, just take a quick look here, just walk out and walk around. You can see that the image is upside down and reverse. You can, you can slow down a bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but it's like upside down. So basically what's happening is that uh, the, the, bo uh, the film is seeing it differently. It's going through the lens, everything is upside down and reversed. So that's what people looked like in the day. They had to see it like this. Uh, so you have to think in a different way. So it's just not looking on your iPhone or your camera, it's everything's reversed. Oh, sure. Uh, sure, go for it. Copyright Jimmy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> we good? Okay. So yeah, so the plate's ready, so I'm gonna pop that. So anybody else wanna take a look? Are you guys good? Okay, so we focus the image. And we Jimmy looks pretty decent for, for Jimmy. So all right, you looking good, sir? You feeling good? Yep. Okay, so looking towards the lens. One second, double check the focus. Good, locked. Okay, so this is my shutter, this lens cap here. So I'm gonna block the light. So right now, no light is seeing the back of the camera. This is our plate, which was just done. You saw it poured collodion, it's been through silver nitrate. Now it's gonna go in the back of the camera. Okay, it's in the back. Lens cap, close, we gotta do that. And then we take this thing called a dark slide, which basically allows uh, the light to see the back of the film. So. We're gonna do exposure for about, what did I say, 16? We'll go 19, we'll go 19 seconds. We'll go 19 seconds. We'll, we'll make a halfway point. We'll, we'll figure out somewhere there. Okay, so what's gonna happen? Okay, Jimmy, relax, focus here on right here. Okay, take a breath, you're all good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count down from three, two, one, and say expose. And then what's gonna happen is that, um, I'm gonna count off 22 seconds. I just gotta make sure I can see this. Sorry, can I squeeze there for a second? Thank you. Whoop, maybe not. I'm gonna squeeze in there right there, so sorry. Okay, so I'm just gonna look over the clock and go with 22 seconds. So that's how I timed it. And for me, counting off 22 seconds and actual 22 seconds are two different things. And that usually helps the subject to relax a bit. So usually what I do is I ask people to turn around when we take a photograph. Reason being is that the subject may look at you and you know think but jimmy he's fine he's fine he'll he's focused <laughs> he'll look at this but if i do a portrait of, if i do a photo of you i'll ask everybody to turn around so uh no one will be staring at you when you do the photographs okay so jimmy 19, 19 did i say 19 seconds was that it yeah. okay cool all right so we're looking at the clock we're gonna go for about 19 seconds okay jimmy you okay okay dark slides out okay uh almost there okay counting down from three oh, sorry three Two, one, expose. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It was actually 19, but I only kept the 16. So, throws them off, we're good, relax. You're good, you're good, you're good. Okay, Maisie, where are you? Awesome. Okay, Maisie's gonna take it to the dark room now. She has to go into the dark. Does anybody want to see this part? So what she's doing now is she's going inside. She's pouring this thing called developer. So the developer is gonna go over the plate. 
and it's going, she's got to uh, move the chemistry around. The Velpa reacts with the silver nitrate and the collodion, and what happens when an image will slowly appear. It'll re uh, appear reverse. You'll see like a ghost of the image, and from that, uh, she's waiting for the highlights and the shadows to appear. Once she does that, once she sees that, she pours water over the plate and then stops the process. So she keeps pouring water over it until it clears. So there's an oily patch in there and you have to wash that off. That's the developer working, reacting. So once that's washed out, then we can bring it outside and then we can put it into the fixer. And the fixer, we'll put it in for about 10, 15, 20 seconds and it will appear above you like in the old days when and you'll be ooh ah and you'll be like yeah 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 okay cool so we're gonna do that throughout today so we're gonna wait for her Maisie how are we doing well I like to hear that I like that I like the sound of that okay so this is a very organic process I'll tell you this it's uh clothing is very sensitive to many many different things to light the temperature humidity if it doesn't like the day of the week or whatever um, it may work, it may not work. You have all these crazy factors. And um, where's Jimmy? Make sure Jimmy's there. Where's Jimmy? Jimmy J, take a look. Okay, put it through. Um, I've been working with wet plate for the past four, four and a half years. I was intrigued by it seven years ago and I fell in love with it. I didn't know what it was, but it wasn't digital. And it was something that totally blew my mind. And when I did research on it, I discovered it was a 150 year old process and it just blew me away what they did back then. So I started getting into it about four years ago seriously. I started researching it, doing workshops, collecting equipment, and I just fell in love with it. And this is what I have a passion for, to do something that is hands-on, analog, that uh, is not digital, I repeated that, and it just uh, works out well. Sometimes I stick a bit. So. 
There we go. There's a plate. So I'm gonna lift that from underneath and just put it in a tray. And then this is the developer and basically just pour it on just a very small amount. Just shake it around. Leave it for about 15 seconds. You can see the image is starting to come up as a negative. Just keep it moving on there. And then it's just plain water to dilute it down to stop it from developing. Okay, and now you can bring it outside. The beer look. <laughs> <laughs> what do you plan to do with this? Uh, uh, I want to. I want to take a. I want to take a wet plate to an art form. I want to start shooting as artwork. So I want to start going to the fields, shooting people around the country. I want to find every different types of people, uh, old, rich, poor. I want to capture them with this process. I'm Claudia. I'm Lawrence. How did you folks uh, know about this event? Uh, well, it's actually, it was his birthday yesterday, so I googled it. I googled what events are around Vancouver, and um, found this event. And it was really interesting, so <laughs> I thought I'd bring him down. Yeah, I was super excited to hear about it, um, because she kind of sold it as like a, a viewmaster kind of thing, because I didn't really know what it was. Mm -hmm. So when I came down, I realized it's kind of like an old school kind of, um, you know, like 3D thing with like a, that, um, you know, that, 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 that <laughs> film picture, uh, which is really cool, so I'm very excited. How did you folks enjoy the whole experience with Phil? Oh, it was awesome. It's so interactive. Yeah, it was a good experience. Like, um, I never took photography in high school, so this is kind of like a neat kind of way to mm -hmm. learn about it a little more and how it's developed, and it was yeah. super fun. We were expecting sort of a demonstration, but instead you get hands-on experience, so that was really nice. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I'm sure your friend's going to be jealous of all your beautiful photographs there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> That's yeah. the idea. I <laughs> saw the exhibit downstairs too, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My name's Siobhan. Um, I'm currently a student at UEC. Tell us, uh, how did you know about this event? Uh, I found out through my friend about the Capture Photography Festival and I have an interest in photography. I did a bit of darkroom, like mobile photography and or, like DSLR photography. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is it? 16, 17 seconds. Okay. Cam, caps on, right? Yeah. Okay, you're on. You're on. Did you know Phil ahead of time? No, I didn't. I found out about this event after looking at all the workshops on the website, and it seems something like really cool, like going beyond just darkroom photography, going way back to like the 1850s. So I thought that'd be super cool. Four, three, two, one, and finished. Yeah. Who pushed you on? Can you tell us your, your experience? Yeah, so first um, uh, Phil explained a lot of how we, how he does, or what, what the process of tintype photography is, and he put a lot of care into like making sure that everyone looked good, that they were happy with their photo, he even offered to redo mine because it was like, it, it looked super scary because um, the edges of the photo are generally like darker, so because it was covering my face, like it was kind of hard to see, so he offered to redo that for me and I was super grateful. He's like super cheery and it was super fun to learn from him. Well, actually it was quite interesting. I never thought there were so many people who line up for take their shot. And so I was number 10. I guess it was probably like more like 20 people taking their shots. So that was very nice to see people interested in having their shot in a traditional very oil style way rather than just in a digital form and see it on a screen so i think i enjoyed to see the development and how the picture comes up and kind of you look like a ghost sort of thing so i think it was very nice and very enjoyable and very inspiring to go back to the old methods and try to do some more research and uh in working on that do you have your photograph of you? Ah, yes. Yeah, sure. uh, well, I have a, 
I have just a, a shot on my telephone uh -huh. because um, they're still drying and they're gonna put it on a big wall all together. So I don't know if you can see it. A bit tricky. Yeah. Maybe from here. <laughs> from here. <laughs> kind of. Cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So we'll see when the big wall is with all the pictures together. That's probably gonna be very nice art piece. Great. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That's pretty sharp. Does that look sharp to you? <laughs> oh, did that just shift slightly? Three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. 